horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair, so in the ring, you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! It was late afternoon when Greg Stacy, a lean, shifty-eyed man, entered a cafe in the town of Medora, located on a bank of the upper Missouri River in the Dakota Territory. Inside the door, he paused, looked around the room, then approached a white-aproned man at one end of the bar. Well, what'll it be, stranger? Nothing right now. I'm just looking for a gent named Hudson. You mean Pete Hudson, foreman of the Maltese Cross Ranch? He's the one. He's in the back room. I'll go tell him you're asking for him. What's your name? Never mind, I'll go myself. Greg Stacy was unknown to lawmen in that part of the country, but south of the Dakota Territory, he was wanted for many crimes, including cattle and horse stealing, highway robbery, and murder. Greg. Howdy, Pete. I got here as fast as I could. The boys and I had to come all the way from Wichita. I'm glad you made it. I was sure surprised to hear that you've been working steady on a range. <laughs> I'm top hand on the Maltese Cross. Well, so you said in your letter. I took the job so I could line up plans for making a real haul. Cattle? Yep. So that's it. The man I work for is a mighty big operator. He owns two ranches. The Maltese Cross, which is near town, and the Elkhorn Ranch, about 20 miles downriver. I've heard of the Elkhorn. A man named Ferris owns it. Yeah. He also owns the Maltese Cross, and I'm foreman there. We just finished the roundup, so all the best market cattle is herded that makes it mighty convenient to rustle. How many cowhands are on the place? Well, right now, there's only a couple of men to stand guard and watch the fences. Well, where's Ferris? As far as I know, he's at the ranch house. He planned to spend the afternoon there working on his record. We'll have to give him the same as the guards, a bullet. Yeah, but not right away. We'll need his signature on papers to sell the cattle. Yeah, that's right. We'll have to hold him prisoner. Any of the men with you know about the old shack near Chimney Butte? Uh, three of the boys have been there. Good. Send two of them to the ranch house to capture Ferris and take him to the Chimney Butte hideout. Right. Ferris is alone in the house, so they shouldn't have any trouble. Now, there's just one other thing, Greg. What's that? I didn't know this when I wrote you. Ferris sold part interest in his cattle business to an Easterner. What about it? The Easterner's coming here. He's due to arrive on the train tonight, and he's expecting Ferris to meet him. Ferris can't meet him. I'll meet him. He's never seen Ferris. I'll call myself Ferris, and he'll never know the difference. Then what? I have plans for dealing with the Eastern Air. I'll tell you about them later. Right now, you better send the boys to capture Ferris. Yeah, I'll send Gunner and Joe. Tell them to take Ferris to the hideout and stay with them. We'll join them there. Tonto, the Indian friend of the Lone Ranger, watched Greg Stacy leave the cafe, mount his horse at the hitch rail, and ride away. 
was after dark when the Lone Ranger, who had camped in a woods near town, heard the hoofbeats of an approaching horse. A moment later, Tonto rode into the small clearing lighted by a campfire. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Did Stacy's gang stop in Medora, Tonto? Ah. Them run horses into public corral at the end of the street. Men stay there while Stacy go to cafe. Did you follow Stacy to the cafe? Ah, uh, me follow him. He meet someone in private room, talk a little while, then come out and ride past to corral. Me watch from distance. Him talk to five crook. Then two gang right way. Did you follow them? No, Kimasabi. You say keep on Stacy. That's right. What did uh, Stacy and the other three members of his gang do? All go to cafe. Three crooks set a table, order big meal. Stacy go again to private room. That's when we leave and come back here. Well, at last, Tonto, we've caught up to that gang. It's been a long trail from Kansas. And that's right, Kimasabi. Now we go to Lawman, tell him crooks in town. You said two members of the gang left town. And that's right. But Stacy and three others still there. All of those crooks must be captured. Ah. And what we do? Well, I'm trying to decide... I wish we knew who met Stacy in that private room. Uh, me not know that. From what you said, it looks as though Stacy's planning something. I, if he is, Toto, we'll wait and watch. We'll give Stacy and his gang rope enough to hang themselves. In town later that night, Toto located the outlaws, then reported to the Lone Ranger, who waited with Scout and Silver in the darkness behind a row of buildings. Leaving the horses at ground hitch, the two men moved to a place where they could remain unseen while they watched Greg Stacy and three members of his gang across the street near the Medora Railroad Station. Oh, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey. Buckboard stop at station. The driver is talking to Greg Stacy. You know him? No. No, me never see driver. Train with those scared horses. Those horses are too nervous to be hitched to a buckboard. Yeah. You sure got a mighty spirited team to draw that wagon. Yeah, that's what the man in the livery stable said. Warned me to be careful. Said these horses were gun shy. Good. As soon as the Easterners aboard the wagon, you boys know what to do. Just haze the tenderfoot. We know what to do. We've set up a commotion that'll start a runaway that no one can hold back. Yeah, that'll be all right, as long as it looks like an accident. Hey, quiet, Captain. Hey, the pilot's the later. Hey, there, quiet. One passenger who prepared to leave the train at Medora was a dynamic man in his early 20s. He had a quick smile, a friendly manner, and an abundance of energy that found outlet in strenuous sports like boxing, wrestling, riding, and hunting. He was a man whose later years were to be claimed by destiny to fill important pages in the history of America. A man who would one day occupy the White House as President Teddy Roosevelt. Medora. Bully! Good trip, conductor. Good train. Well, thanks, sir. Want some help with the luggage? No, thanks. I'll manage. The arrival of the train with its hissing steam and flying sparks sent the buckboard horses into a frenzy of fear. Pete Hudson, standing near the team, pulled hard on the reins and shouted, Calm down, you crazy fools! Calm down, I tell you. Take it easy. Use a whip on them. I'll cut them to ribbons so they don't calm down. What's going on here? Can horses. Hey, I'll break their spirit. Hold on. Don't use that whip. Hey, the horses are frightened. Whipping won't help. Give me the reins. Stand aside. Now, quiet. Easy. Take it easy. You're all right. No one's going to hurt you, fellas. Holding the reins firmly, the man from the east touched the necks of the horses with a steady hand and spoke in a friendly manner. By golly, he's quiet in those critters. You see, a soft word is sometimes more effective than a big stick. It applies to people as well as to horses. I reckon you must be Mr. Roosevelt. That's right. I'm Ferris. You are? Bully. Glad to meet you face to face. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Roosevelt. These are some of the boys from the Maltese Cross. Glad to see you. Howdy, Howdy, Mr. Mr. Roosevelt. Uh, Greg, you put Mr. Roosevelt's luggage on the buckboard. Right. <laughs> I wasn't sure you could handle Western Bronx, Mr. Roosevelt, so I've got a buckboard for you. Just follow the road straight ahead. Good. Good. Here's the reins, Mr. Thank Roosevelt. You. Now, boys, give the tenderfoot a hazen. <laughs> 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 ah, look at him go. That's what I call a runaway. <laughs> We'll 
We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the hat that happy people have to pay. Eating, oh, eating, and do, 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 and okay. Okay. Hello, this is the Lone Ranger speaking. You know Americans have the reputation of being always on the go. You can see how we got that reputation when you think back on the exploits of men like Daniel Boone, Lewis and Clark, Davy Crockett, and many others. They had to cross the rivers, climb the mountains, break the trails from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Today, Americans are still full of energy. And the important thing to remember is that we are a wheat-eating nation. We eat more energy-giving wheat by far than any other grain. It's one big reason why we are still on the move exploring new frontiers. Keep on eating your weenies and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, who watched from across the street, saw the outlaws deliberately panic the buckboard team. The masked man said, Come on, Tonto, get our horses. We must stop that runaway team before the man on the wagon is killed. Uh -huh. Oh! Teddy Roosevelt was no novice in handling horses, but it took all of his skill and strength to keep the wildly racing team from overturning the buckboard. Teddy! Teddy! Suddenly, he was aware of a man riding a big white horse at breakneck speed to overtake the careening buckboard. As the white horse came close to the driver's seat, Roosevelt saw that the rider's face was partly covered by a mask. The masked man urged his mouth ahead until by leaning far to the side, he could grasp the bridle of the nearest runaway horse. Roosevelt was fully aware of the risk taken by the masked man. The slightest miscalculation or a sudden unexpected turn by one of the horses might cause a fatal fall. But gradually, the team slowed, then stopped. Steady there, steady fellas. You're all right. I'll help you steady those horses. Roosevelt jumped to the ground and hurried forward to aid the masked man in calming the frightened team. Oh, steady, easy, easy. Meanwhile, Toto caught up, threw rain, and dismounted. Easy, easy. Oh, me. Me never see horses handled better. Nor did I. By Gadbury, I've never seen anything more daring than what this masked man did. Me talk about what you did. Toto's right. They're expert stage drivers who couldn't have handled the runaway as well as you did and kept the wagon from tipping over. Ah. This fella make plenty good stagecoach driver. Thanks, Indian. And thanks to you for helping me. I've heard of masked outlaws in this part of the country, but I didn't expect to owe my life to one. I'm not an outlaw. Then why are you masked? Who are you? Many people call me the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? I've heard of you. Yes, indeed, this is a bully adventure. Uh, do you mind telling me your name? Certainly not. It's Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, Mr. Roosevelt, Otto and I saw the men at the station deliberately panic the horses. <laughs> Hazing me, trying to test the metal of a tenderfoot. That's why they did it. Are they uh, friends of yours? One of them is Sylvain Ferris. I've bought an interest in the cattle business he and Merrifield operate. We own the Maltese Cross and Elkhorn ranches. Some of the men who are at the station are outlaws, wanted in Kansas. But they're cowboys working at the Maltese Cross. They're cattle thieves and killers. You must be mistaken. I'm sure Ferris wouldn't hire outlaws. He may not know they're outlaws. He must have it. Men come this way. Yeah, we'll leave before they arrive. Be on guard when you're with them. Yes, indeed. Easy, steady, big fella. Scout, easy, fella. Come on, come on. Come on. Roosevelt watched the masked man and Tonto ride away and admired the great horse, Silver. Then he turned as Pete Hudson, who called himself Ferris, and the outlaws, who had been identified as ranch hands, approached and drew rein. Oh, 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 oh. Are you all right, Mr. Roosevelt? <laughs> I'm just bully. Boys meant to start the team at a fast clip just to sort of haze you it means to start a runaway. All right, Ferris, I don't mind a little action. We saw two men here with you. Who are they? Oh, one of them is... Uh, I, I didn't get his name, but he stopped the team. Oh. Well, maybe I'd better drive the team the rest of the way. Nonsense, I'll drive. You and the men ride ahead. I'll follow. Well, all right, Mr. Roosevelt. I'll see you at the ranch. After reaching the ranch house, Roosevelt talked for a long time with a man who posed as his partner while the real Sylvain Ferris was held prisoner in the shack near Chimney Butte by two members of Greg Stacy's gang. The rest of the gang, and Stacy himself, slept in the Maltese Cross bunkhouse. The following morning, the outlaws were saddling their horses in the corral when Pete Hudson approached. Oh, Greg. Yeah? Take the boys to Chimney Butte as fast as you can. Drive off the stock at the corral there. Take it to Painted Rock Canyon. You know the place? Yeah, but I don't... Take Sylvain Ferris with you. I'll join you later. What's wrong? 
Roosevelt asks too many questions. Hey, here he comes. Out of bed and dressed for riding. Remember what I said, Greg. Move the cattle as soon as possible. Right. Morning, gentlemen. Morning, sir. Bully day for riding, huh? Oh, uh, looks to me like a storm setting its way. Storm nonsense. I want to see this ranch first. Sure thing, Mr. Roosevelt. Especially the cattle. You said in your last letter it would be corralled by the time I arrived. Well, you we... You mentioned uh... a natural land formation that made a fine corral. Chimney Butte, I think you call it. Oh, well, uh... Well, Mr. Roosevelt, I, I don't like to take you there when there's likelihood of a hard rain. You see, the place gets flooded and... Oh, uh, the... that's strange. In one of your letters, you said it was a bully place to hold cattle because it was well-drained. Oh, well, I, I must have been thinking of another place. Ferris, would you mind going back to the house with me for a few minutes? I want you to sign an extra copy of our partnership agreement. Uh, sign my name? Yes, if you have no objection. Greg, use your gun barrel on him. That's heavy. What did you say, Ferris? He told me to do this. Oh! That's oh. it, Greg. Well, Rich Easterner can be knocked out as easy as anyone else. He knew we were up to something. Yeah, and he knew he'd trap you when you couldn't sign your name to match the Ferris signature. Take him into the house. Tie and gag him, and we'll head for Chimney Butte. You said two men were guarding the cattle there. After we get Ferris and the boys who are with him, we'll gun the guards and then move the cattle. We'll be a long way off before anyone finds Roosevelt. Roosevelt regained consciousness soon after Pete and the outlaws left the ranch. He found himself lying on the floor of the house with a gag in his mouth and strong ropes around his wrists and ankles. He fought hard for nearly an hour to free his hands. Then he rested for a moment. He had just begun a new effort when he saw the door swing open. The masked man and Toto entered the room. Toto, Roosevelt, tight and gag. Uh, Remove the gag. I'll take care of these ropes. There. Uh, oh, uh, thanks. I, I don't know what brought you to here, well, but you I... camped in the woods near here and saw the men who met you at the station riding past. You weren't with them, so we came here to find out why. Did you see all of the men who met me? Well, there were six of them. And the man who calls himself Paris is with them. There. Don't you think he's Ferris? No, I think he's an imposter. And I think there's a reason why they don't want me to go near Chimney Butte. The men we saw were headed that way. We'll go after them. I'll go with you. Are you sure you feel well enough? I've never avoided a fight in my life. Just give me time to get my guns in the bedroom. Very well. Otto, Roosevelt looks like a fighting man. If he can handle guns as well as he handles horses, he'll make a great partner in battle. Ah. In a moment, the Easterner returned to the living room, buckling a cartridge belt, from which hung a brace of six guns, as heavy as those of the Lone Ranger. I'm ready. Let's catch those crooks. We'll ride them roughshod. At the corral, Roosevelt selected a big, powerful horse. While helping saddle the animal, the Lone Ranger said, You'll have a hard ride, Roosevelt. Between here and Chimney Butte, the ground is mighty rough. <laughs> Can't be too rough for me. I like rough riding. It's exciting. All right, rough rider. Let's go. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. One, two, three. Get up there. Get up. During the fast, hard ride across the uneven ground, Teddy Roosevelt handled his horse with skill and daring and was admired by the Lone Ranger and Toto. Presently, the three men saw a massive formation that towered above the rock-studded country. From a distance, it resembled a short, thick chimney. That's the place. That's Chimney Butte. That's where the cattle are corralled. A moment later, the horsemen were near enough to hear gunfire. They saw bursts of smoke from two guns fired by guards who were fortified by rocks in the narrow gap that opened into the area where the cattle was held. The guards were returning the gunfire of attackers who were crouching behind massive boulders. The eight outlaws were well protected from the gunfire of the guards. But they were in plain view of the hard-riding masked man, his Indian friend, and the Easterner, who shouted, Those are the men from the ranch! The outlaws! We draw a rain, get back a rock, no fire! No, no, don't draw a rain! Charge! With his reins wrapped around the saddle horn, Roosevelt spurred his horse, drew both guns, and opened fire. For the Lone Ranger and Toto, there was just one thing to do. We'll stay with him, Toto. One, two, three! Three men rode abreast, firing with devastating speed and accuracy. They were like three musketeers of old, ignoring the odds against them, riding to battle with no thought of personal safety. It was the kind of charge that Teddy Roosevelt, a few years later, led up San Juan Hill to turn the tide of the war with Spain. Several of the outlaws dropped in their tracks. Others had their weapons smashed by bullets. The rest threw down their guns and raised their hands. Oh, 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 oh. Keep your hands up. After your side, the wounds will be cared for. Great work, Roosevelt. Ah, uh, you plenty good fighting man. A bully fight! Yeah. 
A short time later, Sylvain Ferris, who lay tightly bound and gagged in a shack, heard the creak of an opening door. He turned on his bunk, expecting to see one of his captors. Instead, he saw a brisk man who drew a hunting knife as he said... Have you free in no time, Ferris. First, the gag. I have lots to tell you about a gang of crooks, a crooked foreman. Uh, that takes care of the gag. Who are you? Me? I'm your partner, Roosevelt. Well, thank you. Oh, don't start thanking me, Ferris. We're both obligated to the masked man who's going to bring the marshal here to take charge of the crooks. There, now your hands are free. A masked man? That's right. <laughs> he calls me the Rough Rider. And I call him the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.